G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the custom turret controller block. The thing that's allowing me to set up something like this turret really, really easily. The custom Evil. turret controller Very block good. in large grid is a single block, in small grid is a 1x2. Other than that size difference, there is one other important difference with these blocks. If we have a look in the menu, we can see that the small grid version when you enable AI, has a maximum aiming radius of 600 meters. If we look at the large grid version, it has a maximum aiming radius of 800 meters. If those 200 meters make a difference to you, then you may need to consider where you're going to fit all your custom turret controllers on your large grid. I'm not going to be going into all of the new changes to AI targeting. That's something for a separate video. We're just gonna be looking at the custom controller block and how we can set it up here. And speaking of that, let's look at how we set it up. To set up the custom turret controller block, we need a few things. Ideally, you're going to want to have your base plate for this conveyed up so that you can pass ammunition through to your turret. Then on top of that, you're going to want to place an advanced rotor. You want something that allows you to have horizontal control as your first setup. So that's horizontal to whatever surface you're working with. Starting with a hinge can cause some weirdness, and I'll demonstrate that afterwards. So let's place down our advanced rotor. On top of that, we're going to place down a hinge. I prefer to set it up this way, and this is just to demonstrate how we can set it up, but you don't have to use a hinge. You could use a rotor at this point. It doesn't matter. A hinge is just a nice, neat way of doing it. So we place our hinge, and then on top of that, we need to place a weapon. It needs to be a static weapon. So it could be a rocket launcher, could be a railgun, but I think that might be a little bit big for our purposes here. Or it could be artillery. Let's use artillery. I want to rotate it that way. So we'll place an artillery cannon on there. And we're ensuring that this is pointing in the same direction as the hinge is pointing. Because we want it to be able to fire through the full 180 degree arc of the hinge. And then onto that artillery cannon we're going to place a block on the side. If you wanted it to be on top, you could place it on top, but that could potentially cause you some problems based on what's around here. You're more likely to have clearance on the side. We'll place that on the side here and then onto that block we're going to place a camera. Then we need a turret controller block. Let's place it the right way up. And to control the turret controller block we need a cockpit. It doesn't have to be a cockpit. It can be one of these new helm blocks. It can be any control device. Anything you would normally use to fly a ship can be used here. So let's use the helm. It gives us a nice clear view of what we're doing. So now let's set up the block. Going into our control panel for the turret controller block, we can see all of our settings here. We want to assign our azimuth rotor. Now azimuth is our horizontal rotor. So the one that's going to allow us to rotate to different angles on the horizon. So we'll select our azimuth rotor, which in this case is going to be advanced rotor three. We then want to select our elevation rotor. That's our hinge. That's what's going to allow us to tilt up and down. Which will be hinge. Then we need to select our camera. Which is going to be camera. Next up, we have these velocity multipliers. These multipliers allow you to control how sensitive the turret is to changes in position of your mouse. So we're going to leave them both at 9. I think that's reasonable. Then we need to select our weapon, which is our artillery. So if we click on that, we can then click add. You can add more than one weapon. If these three weapons were on this particular turret, I could add them and they'll be controlled as well. But we don't want to do that. We want to actually remove those. And then we can select whether it's controllable by AI, which let's do it. Crank it up to 800 meters. Selecting Enable AI will actually cause the turret to behave just like a regular turret. So that means behaving like any old Gatling, missile, artillery turret, assault cannon turret. These single block turrets, it's going to behave like those. So anything that's within that range that you set that's a valid target, the turret will try to shoot just like it was one of these. Which is kind of cool. Using the new targeting system, you can also pass at targets. That's set up. Now we need a way to actually jump in and control it ourselves manually. 
I'm now in the cockpit. You can see I'm grabbing that joystick and that bar. Then I'm going to press G and bring up our G menu. And we're going to grab our custom turret controller block. Right click on it and select control. This is going to allow us to get into direct control of this turret. In this case, it's not as likely to be an issue, but there are many cases using this block where I've found it's also useful to grab our camera and add a view control to our hotbar. This allows us to jump in and out of third person and first person control of the turret. So if we press one, what's gonna happen is we're gonna jump immediately into that camera and into controlling this turret. As you can see, we're now in control. If you find that your controls are inverted to what you're used to or expecting, you can exit control, you can go into the menu, and you can change your assigned velocity multipliers into the negative, and that will flip the control around. In this case, I was actually happy with it, so I'm going to leave it where it was. So if we go back into control of it, if I press F, I exit the camera, but I don't exit the turret. So if I want to get back into first person, I can then press that control that I added for viewing the camera. Swap out. Swap in. Swap out. It's sometimes handy. And the sometimes when I found Pure it to be particularly critical. handy was when I was using this turret controller for something that is a bit different. Because the turret controller can be used for controlling cranes. The turret controller is not a turret only thing. It's just particularly well suited to that. It is a device that can control two rotors or hinges. And a crane that's reasonably effective can be built from only two active rotors and hinges. In this crane's case, what I've got is an active rotor here to allow me to spin the crane around, and an active hinge here to allow me to lift up the crane arm. These two hinges here are passive, they're just allowing this chain of pistons to flop about. If I go in and control it, when I move up or move down, it goes up and down with me. When I spin round, I can move around. And this is actually kind of cool because I think this is going to open up building cranes as a, that are controllable with mouse and keyboard controls to a lot more people, myself included, because using the scripts for these things definitely allowed for more powerful cranes than what we've got here, but was something that I always kind of struggled with. So I reckon I can create some pretty cool stuff a lot more easily now that we've got these blocks. You could even design a crane that requires two turret control blocks if you wanted to be able to control hinges further down the chain. So if you set the control block up to control the first bit, exit out of it, then control the second part, do the fine control with that, that sort of thing may be practical for welding cranes or grinding cranes, that sort of thing. But let's get back to turrets. I said before I was going to show you why you build the rotor first, so let's do that. Let's build a hinge. Let's stick an advanced rotor on top of it. And this time, let's put a rocket launcher on it. With a setup like this, I can control the turret and move it. It sort of works. I can get to a lot of different angles. But you can see, moving up and down, I move the whole thing. If I wanted to turn backwards, I have to turn all the way around, and then I can control my up and down. Because this design leads to things like this. And hitting the ground. <laughs> it's, it's just... It's not as good as the other design. The other way works better. You're going to want to make sure you build that rotor first, and then stick your hinge on top. Because this is just weird. It's real weird. On this truck here, I've got a nice little rotor turret and a regular turret. That's because when you've got a regular turret, you can grab control of it. You can still drive. So I can steer, I can move, I can move my turret, I can shoot while I'm moving and controlling this vehicle. Unfortunately, with the custom turret controller, that's not possible. If I grab control... Well, let's just stop the vehicle first. If I grab control of that turret on the right, shooting. It's all fine. If I use WAS and D, a whole lot of nothing happens. So if you've got a vehicle that's designed to be controlled by one person, and you want to be able to fire the turret 
anywhere but straight forward or fire the turret in other directions while moving, you're going to need to use a regular turret. It still has that advantage over these. It's a pretty rare use case, but it's one worth being aware of. The last thing I want to demonstrate is how we're going to make a turret like this one. This turret design is one that I saw thanks to Aragath, who's one of the keen devs. He has an awesome ship that he's posted onto the workshop, which has one of these ball turrets. And it uses a rather cheeky method to be built. Inside this large grid hinge is the smallest of small grid hinges. And the easiest way I've found to get those to place correctly is by doing this. We'll start off with our advanced rotor. We'll place our hinge on top. We'll remove the hinge part. With the hinge part removed, we can then try and add the small part in between. The way I like to do that is place a block down here, place another hinge, remove its hinge part, we'll go into our control panel, grab our hinge, and add a small head. We're wanting to add the small head to this hinge, not this one. You'll see why in a second. When I add small hinge head, I get this one. I get the 3x3 three three one. That's not the one we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend a line of blocks out from this one directly over the top of our other block. I'm in creative mode, so I was able to click and drag that with control. I'm going to place another block there. And then I'm going to place the hinge part that we want. The hinge part we want is this tiny little one. So we place that there. That doesn't look like it's particularly close, but it still will be fine. Let's go back into the control panel. We'll find our hinge that's attached to our rotor, our new one. It'll say detached down here. If you've got multiple like me, that's a nice easy way to find which one you're looking at. Then click attach. And you can see by that little shift that we've now attached Fuel that tiny critical. little hinge part. We can now remove the rest of this stuff. If you're doing this in survival, there may be situations where you'll still have to weld up things to be able to get into those parts of the control panel. If you haven't welded these things up, I would also recommend going into the control panel, finding your particular rotor that you're building with, and increasing the braking torque up fairly high. If you do that, even when it's unpowered, this rotor will not move, which will allow you to make sure that it is perfectly aligned to allow this to attach with ease. Putting up your braking torque is more reliable than using hinge locks in my experience, so I would definitely recommend doing it that way. So now we've got our floating hinge part. This thing will work just like normal. We hop into a control here. Let's set this to a velocity of one. I can then hop yeah, out of that controller cool. and you'll see this is moving just fine. Normally. If I could remember how to use my jetpack. So while it does look wonky while it's doing its whole levitation mode thing, once you fill this void with stuff, it can start looking really, really cool. So, say for example, we want to add something as big as a railgun. Let's pop a pair of railguns on this. One there. Another one there. That kind of looks like a pretty awesome <laughs> railgun turret. And once you've placed down all your extra little bits of detailing around it, if you're wanting to put some extra blocks to fill out the hinge a bit more, make sure you rotate the hinge through its full range of motion to ensure that you haven't put anything that might get in the way. Last thing you want to do is during a fight end up clanging out your ship because you've actually put something that can't move in a direction it wants to. If we look at this ball turret, you can see that the marker on the hinge is towards the back. That marker is ideally what you want facing to the back so that the custom turret controller can be set up normally. In this case, however, I've flipped it and that's where that negative value for your elevation velocity multiplier can come in handy. Because I've gotten it wrong, my controls were inverted there, so I can press minus nine, and now when I go in to control the turret, it's all back to normal controls for me. So you wanna make sure that you've got that marker 
towards the rear or that you change the value to negative to make up for the opposite placement. So there you have it. That's how you can make your own custom ball turret, just like Aragath did. Cheesy, but dang, is it good looking, especially when they're shooting. If you've come up with any other cool ideas for how to make use of these custom turret controller blocks, I would love to hear them because I really want to mess around with these things and come up with some weird, weird stuff to do with them. I reckon there are going to be some fun things we can get up to with having such an easy way to control two rotors with just your mouse. With this Warfare 2 update, there's been so much added that I actually have a few other tutorials in mind. Which means there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. Boy, is that jiggly.